I have been waiting a long time to bust a nut on this channel. And we finally get to, we've collected a bunch and we've set up our little adapter for our slack snap machine. We're gonna test some thinner cables, some thicker cables, some webbing and rope that go inside of nuts and hexes. And at the end, we have a surprise for you, which hopefully entices you to stay throughout the whole video. So stay tuned. Hi, I'm Ryan Jinks, and welcome to a Slack Snap episode where we are going to test some Passive Pro and find out what happens here in the lab. And then if this goes well, if it does what we think, and if you guys click the like button, we'll go outside and see if it translates out to real rock. Let me show you what we got here. We have some six kilonewton cables. These are all rated for six kilonewtons. This is a brassy. This is my favorite kind of nut. It goes in more of a angled crack when you're climbing El Capitan. Love these things. And then all the nuts and Passive Pro that I never use because I own too many cams. Bobby, can you hand me the... So these are thinner cables mm -hmm. and these are 2.5 millimeters thick. The next thing we have are 10 kilonewton rated Passive Pro. And we got a big old hex to see if that bend radius that it goes in is going to be better for it than that tighter bend radius. Even though these are all rated for the same, these cables are 3.5 one millimeters thick. Another point of interest is these are black diamond nuts and these are eccentric camp inter alp from Italy. And they don't actually have any rating on them, but they are the same size diameter cable as these. I think they're also a lot older. They just feel different than these. So we're gonna test two of these since I've got them. Next is the thickest cable we've got so far. This is a eight millimeter rope inside of some bigger nuts. And we're gonna find out if these are a lot stronger. They're a lot more bulky, super interesting to test. And lastly, we have two hexes here that have a half inch wide piece of webbing threaded inside of them. One has a tighter bend radius than the other. So let's find out what these break at. We're gonna show you the cam crusher adapter that didn't work very good for cams. So this adapter was originally designed for Active Pro like cams. It is a little too slippery on the inside to have these two plates like this. And so it's perfect for Passive Pro. And we're gonna start with the small brassy one. And we got our two shackles going to one and two dynamometers for redundancy. We got some more here and we got some more coming. Our hydraulic makes it super nice, especially for these lower brake tests, anything under 90 kilonewtons is the hydraulic. Whereas we used to have a Costco winch and pulleys if you've ever seen our other videos. This is our bolt buster one, which we are gonna go do some videos this week. So pretty neat setup. We got all sorts of bolts. These are all the glues that we have, all the hangers, more stuff under there. Pretty neat setup that we have in our new lab. So let's get breaking. Whoa, it broke where it met the carabiner and not inside of where it connects into the brassy. 8.8, .8. well, they were right. Good for them. So Bobby got it out. Oh, this could be aluminum leftovers that's from the cams that deposit on the side, which now deposit on this. Put in the comments below why you think there's shiny stuff on my brassy. Okay, cable broke in the nut. The nut is still in there. <laughs> oh, less than eight. You it's might die if you six. use this. No. Oh, it's rated a six. All right, that's great then. That's pretty neat how it broke that bend up there. Bobby's nut tool remover. So that's an interesting result. This thing looks bomber and our six kilonewton cable broke at 7.98. So I was just having a thought and Ryan told me I had to be on camera to have thoughts. <laughs> uh, so the difference in those results, I believe, is the brassy, um, the wires are welded into the, the brass stopper at the top so they don't have a bend radius there. All our other knots had a bend radius right at that knot. Nut bend radius right at the nut. 
<laughs> so these are the five 10 kilonewton nuts and hexes that we're going to test next. We're going to pop them all and then show you the carnage. We always get something fun and interesting when we do this. If you like that, please like this video. Wow. Uh, wild. Bobby's grateful he doesn't have to um, hammer that one out. So our 10 kilonewton Passive Pro all is above 10 kilonewtons with a couple variations in here. It's interesting that this didn't break where the carabiner was, where the swage is, or where it's bending at this top of the hex here. It just randomly broke on the side. And same with this one, and these are both the same brand. But the rest of these, the black diamond ones, broke where it met the carabiner, met the carabiner, and our second pull, it broke here where it met the carabiner. So our best results were the black diamond nuts, so the most interesting result we got was our hex collapsing at 13.38 kilonewtons. And then uh, we were able to continue to pull it and break it at 11.92 for the cable. But that is not something I was expecting. Any profound thoughts, Bobby? Not this time. What's our next test? Uh, we are going to test another hex um, with a nylon sling inside instead of a cable. It's still in its original shape. Interesting. I mean, feels a little bit more burly. It broke where it was in there. So that's kind of what I was expecting, and it is super strong enough. And this is a pretty old sling. Yeah, I was surprised it broke that high. Sling broke. This is not getting caught soon enough. Risking our screen. <laughs> That thing is stuck in there. Um, cool. Okay, so the rope broke. And the nut is still in there. Shocker! What'd we get, Bobby? 16.78. What was your guess? 10 to 13 like all the other ones. And I guessed 18. If this was the price is right, you still would have won. <laughs> uh, no, you were closer. Eight no, days. but I was over. Oh. That's how the price of right works. Uh, the price of right? Yeah, didn't she have a grandma that used to watch that girl in a... Uh, no, but I still know it's the price is right, not the price of right. <laughs> we'll have to do a, the, the force is right TV show. A different result. Why would we break a second one, Bobby? It's gonna break the same. That's pretty warm. Whoa! I'm stoked, because that's what I was guessing. Did you win the price of right this time? I won the price is right! I would totally be able to use that again if I stuck another eight mil rope in there. So unfortunately, the conclusion in this video is you've been safe the whole time. We have a handful more of our nuts that uh, we'd love to go outside and test them in real rock if we get enough interest in this video. Please share it with a friend. Please smash the like button. And if you made it all the way to the end of the video, you've earned yourself a free subscription to this channel. Hit the subscribe button. Head over to slackline.com if you want to read the Bolting Bible, learn highlining A to Z, or if you'd like to donate because this channel is sponsored by you. I really appreciate it. You're the reason I'm able to do this. All the money you put into this goes straight back into the channel. Welcome to the bonus material. This is a tricam. It is more of an active piece of protection. As it tries to come out, it opens up and it pulls this sling on this roll pin that looks like a cinnamon roll. 
that attaches it to the tri-cam. And since it kind of does slide around in our cam crusher nut buster adapter here, we are going to kind of make it passive protection. But either way, we're going to see if the sling breaks or if the roll pin roll roll pin breaks first. The sling broke where the carabiner was before it broke at the roll pin. Wow. I really want to break that, so I put a soft shackle on it. One more try, you guys. All right, soft shackle survived. Try cam has no pin. <laughs> well, that's a very warm pin. 